Hello everyone, it is January 10th, 2023, it's Tuesday, it's Herp Tuesday, welcome to this week's episode. So it's a new year, and that can be a great time to try some new things. So what I'm going to suggest here is essentially a harmonic etude, because I think harmonics are the type of thing that a lot of people, you might learn how to do a harmonic, and I've done several episodes on harmonics. And you have a piece that has a harmonic or two, and maybe you, okay, meh, meh, you manage to play that piece and do those harmonics. But then you move on to something else, and maybe the music that you're working on right now has no harmonics at all. And yet, harmonics are something that really, really benefit from sustained practice, not just doing them every once in a while. Because harmonics, unlike normal notes, really require a lot of precision in where we are on the string, right? There's a lot of things that can go wrong to make a harmonic not sound the way we want it to. So uh, that's why I think doing something like this, I'm gonna suggest that we're gonna play this piece through, instead of regular notes, we're gonna play all the notes as harmonics. And just a great way to practice harmonics. So let's talk first a little bit about what a harmonic is. So the idea of a harmonic is when the center of the string is held either with the, the base of the hand, palm, or the knuckle of two. So the right hand uses the knuckle, and left hand uses the base of the hand, but then the thumb plays, and what happens is, because we're holding the string in the exact, exactly the center, the upper half that we're playing is vibrating at twice the frequency of the normal note. And it sounds an octave higher instead, so it's a beautiful sound, one of my favorite harp effects. And so really beautiful, but it's tricky because there's a lot of things that can go wrong. So we have to find the center of the string because if we don't, it doesn't sound so good. We also have to have the correct timing. So if we go to play this, but move the finger away too early that's holding the center of the string, we just get a normal note, right, instead of this harmonic sound. Or if we leave this finger on too long, we get kind of a thunky sound. So we this timing of when to move this lower finger or lower part of the hand away in unison with playing with the thumb, that's a bit tricky. And then, of course, it's also tricky because we can do everything perfect. We can have the great timing, but if we're not in the center of the string, we're not going to get that harmonic. And that's where doing a lot of practice, building that visual awareness, that muscle memory, and each harp is often a little bit different. So if you're playing on the same harp, I have a great incentive to do a bunch of harmonics because you'll know where they are on your harp, exactly where they are. So as I say, I've done a bunch of episodes on harmonics. I'm going to link to them in the video description as well as up here, I think, somewhere, and check them out. But assuming you are familiar with how to play harmonics, let's talk about playing this piece with harmonics. So this is a, a beautiful chorale from Bach's uh, St. Matthew's Passion. The chorale was actually written by Hassler quite a bit earlier, but Bach uh, harmonized it and used this. And so I did a very easy arrangement in harp episode 181 which I thought would be perfect to repurpose and use this to play all of it as harmonics because it's just single notes in each hand, right? There's no chords, so we can just change them into harmonics. And in a way, it's easier because we don't have to worry about fingering. We know it's always going to be these harmonics. So let me try playing it for you. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to play the right hand down an octave. So I wrote or arrange this up here. But I'm going to actually play them down here, and I'll tell you why in a second. But let me play, play it for you.
so it's a beautiful, I, I, it's a beautiful piece of music, right? Some very satisfying harmonies, and uh, as I say, I think it works quite nicely to just play all of that as harmonics. So the reason I'm playing the right hand down here instead of up here is because with harmonics, the bigger the string, the more leeway we have, the bigger sweet spot we have. So that is a quite a nice harmonic, but if I move up a little bit on the string, even moving up quite a bit, that's an acceptable harmonic. So maybe not quite as round as this, but I can move down and still get a halfway decent harmonic. So there's a bit of leeway there. Whereas this G up here, it can be beautiful. Some of these small strings can have a beautiful sound when you really nail that harmonic, when you get it exactly in the center, but move just a tiny bit up, up or down, too low or too high, and you often get just a terrible sound, right? So if we do this, it gets pretty high. I think at one point it even goes up to this A, which is a composer, I would say, try to avoid writing anything that high. The G is, is kind of, it's about as high as, as one would typically want to write unless you really, really want that high harmonic. So that's where I would suggest starting down here just because you're gonna get more positive feedback. You're gonna have more success down here. And then if you want some practice, then go ahead and, and try these higher ones. But you might start down here. Left hand's fine just to play it where it's written. Um, so as you're playing through then, one thing to do is to play a small phrase, for example, this opening phrase, maybe just right hand alone. Remembering that it shouldn't require a lot of effort, right? If we've got the timing correct and everything's correct, we don't need to force it. Like if it's wrong, it's because we're probably not in the right spot. We don't, we don't have to try harder, we just have to find that right spot and see how consistently, oh, that one wasn't quite right. Can I move up or down? Where is it? And something to be aware of that you might not have thought about that it can be really important is to be aware of, are the strings, open strings, are they running all the way down without the lever being engaged, or is the lever up? Because the center of the string is gonna change based on that. And so, for example, here's this open G. Maybe I'll use this open C. The D is also doesn't have the lever up, so we can, there's a, there's a line that happens that ends up as a bit of a curve as we go up, but the, if we find this, we can kind of trace that path and we should successfully find the D as well. But now with this E, if we go here, it's not quite right because the, with the levers up, the center is going to be a little bit lower. So here's where I kind of expected it to be, but that's where I had to be to actually get it to sound. This is also going to stay low because it's up. And then instead of going here, I have to adjust back up because this lever is down. So it's really important to be aware of that. So for example, this opening phrase, if I find this, this next one has the lever up so I can be on this sort of line. It's not a straight line, it's a bit of a curve, but, but this D, I'm gonna to have to be a little bit higher because it's open string. Same as the C, and then a little bit lower than I might expect here. Same, staying low, and the same. This is also a little bit low, it's the levers engaged on the B and also this F. Mm. So I had to adjust the curve a little bit more than I thought there. 
but now I have to get a little bit higher than I might think to get this open string, down a little bit lower than I might think, same spot, All right? That was easy. But I have to make that micro adjustment. And so you can even write that in. Here I wrote a, an arrow, for example, an up arrow above all the strings that are open strings, or a down arrow above all the strings that are have the levers engaged. I always find it a little bit easier on a pedal harp because you know that if the string is flat, that's the highest you're going to be. And if it's natural, you have to be a little bit lower. And if it's sharp, you have to be a little bit lower still. Whereas here, you know, here this C is natural, we have to be a little bit higher, but this B is also natural, but we have to be a little bit lower because we're tuned to E flat with everything down. So the fact that it's natural doesn't necessarily mean the lever's up or down. It could be up or down either way. Uh, so just that's something really important to be aware of and, and can make a big difference in terms of consistency. You can also, I, I will mention that some harps, it's easier to create harmonics on than others. And also some strings on a particular harp. It might be your harp, the harmonics are great, but maybe there's one or two strings that is really hard to get a harmonic on. That can be a sign that that string needs to be replaced. It also could just be the bit of a weird spot on the harp that doesn't sound, that you're not able to get a good harmonic. So if you're working and working and working, it might be, again, that you're not quite got the right timing or the right spot. But it, you could also, it could possibly be that the harp is not uh, a great harp for creating harmonics. Uh, if you're working with a teacher, you can always try it on your teacher's harp, see if you notice anything different. Um, or if you have multiple harps, you know, go over to a different harp that maybe is easier to play harmonics on. But again, I think just to do something like this, and you don't have to do this piece. You could pick any piece that preferably has a fairly slow uh, single note line and try playing it with harmonics. Uh, it doesn't have to be both hands either, but it's nice to practice either right hand and the left hand or, or at the same time. But it's nice to have both hands get used to playing harmonics so that harmonics become something that you get to and you go, ah, I know how to do that rather than, hmm, I, I used to know how to do that. Let me see if I can remember. So yeah, in with a new year and maybe in with some harmonic practice. So hope you enjoyed that. I will see you in two weeks for another episode of Harp Tuesday. Cheers.